want to bring to order the January 14th, 2020 regularly scheduled board meeting for the Richland 2 Board of Trustees. If I can please have a motion to go into executive session. Motion's been made by Dr. Caution Parker. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by uh, Dr. Holmes. <laughs> yes. Mr. Ch Dr. Caution Parker, would you mind amending your motion to also add personnel matters? Wait. Well, hold on. We're going to have to, since the motion's been made, it's already been seconded, we'll have to have a... We'll have to have a secondary motion to amend the motion. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to amend the current motion to add personnel matters. That's it. Okay, motion's been made by Mr. Shad to add personnel matters. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Caution Parker. <laughs> Is there any discussion on the secondary motion? Everybody, uh, Tamiki, you need a hand vote for this? Hand vote, and motion passes unanimously. Um, so we'll now go back to the uh, amended, the original motion, which is now amended, to include personnel action. Um, so if I can please have a vote on the um, on the motion that with Dr. Cheryl Caution Parker made, which also includes now personnel actions. Everybody, um, can we vote digitally, Tamika? Or I'm not in. I'm not in. Okay, hand vote. Motion passes unanimously. We'll now go into executive session. I want to reconvene the January 14th, 2020 regularly scheduled board meeting, and that is weird to say 2020, um, regularly scheduled board meeting for the Richland 2 Board of Trustees, where we just returned from executive session to discuss the items that were mentioned in the motion made to go into executive session. Um, at this time, we will have our inspirational moment and pledge of allegiance. For the inspirational mo uh, moment, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, every year, the Richland 2 Board of Trustees um, signs a ethical principles poster, not just a document, but a poster that talks about the ethical principles that we as board members um, should follow in our service to the community. All of us uh, here on the Richland 2 School Board take our ethics um, very seriously as it relates to the service that we provide for our students, for the community, uh, for the staff members that serve in Richland School District 2. Um, some of those include things such as seeking regular communication, attending board meetings, working with other board members in a conscientious manner, uh, communication, support, avoiding uh, conflicts of interest, um, encouraging recognition and achievements of students, which we will be doing tonight, certainly, and we do throughout the year, support legislation, take no individual actions, study the current educational issues. Uh, we have folks from SE for Ed that help us stay abreast of some of the issues there uh, with us tonight. And and make our district's educational setting the best possible. I appreciate our Richland 2 board members for taking all of these principles seriously, not just signing the poster, um, but actually taking action uh, or non-action in some cases um, in each of these areas. And uh, so with that, we are all going to come to the front and take a picture um, together with this poster to help sort of cement the moment. If I can have my board members come to the front. for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you.
you. I do think it's important, uh, always the work that we do, that we do it in an ethical manner. Um, and so I appreciate the board's commitment, recommitment to that in the 2020 school year. Um, I will now take a motion to approve the current agenda. Y'all don't all speak Mr. at once. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. I move to approve the Tuesday, January 14th, 2020 agenda as presented. Thank you, Ms. Mackey's made the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Shad. Is there any discussion? With no discussion, we'll take the vote. Mika, am I missing it or did it pop up for anybody else? Yeah. Refresh and join again. Okay. Can we just do a hand vote on this? If everybody will please raise your right hand, all in favor of the motion. All right, all against. Motion passes six to one. We will now move on to, hold on, I just refreshed. We will now move on to special recognitions, Dr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, members of the board. We're at the point of our school board meeting where we take pride in identifying and celebrating those individuals who have achieved uh, premier status here in our district. And so to do that this evening, uh, we have Ms. Martha Jones to, before us uh, to provide us an update and information regarding special recognitions. Martha. Thank you, thank you. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Dr. Davis, Chairman Manning, yeah. board members, cabinet community members, parents and students, I am happy to stand here tonight and uh, offer up tonight's special recognitions. So we'll begin with our nationally recognized broadcast students from Richland Northeast High School. So please come forward, Principal Dr. Sabrina Suber, Convergence Media Director A.J. Chambers, and the team that produces r and &E TV Live, which means the writers, producers, camera, on-air talent, and reporters. Come on up. Takes a big team to do this. You can see all of their names up on the screen. So we're going to give them a microphone and ask them to introduce themselves and tell us what you do on r and &E TV. My name is Breeze Brown, and I am an editor, editor and videographer. Okay, and let's let's start it down there at that end. Hey, I'm Darius Darby. Um, I am the social media coordinator for Convergence Media, and an anchor and reporter. Yeah. <laughs> and I am Darius Lee, and I am also social media coordinator and also an anchor. Hi, I'm Gabby Greenlee, and I'm the news director for Arnie TV Live. Hi, I'm Kamora Smith, and I'm an editor for Arnie TV Live. Hi, I'm Ty Whitaker, and I'm an editor, for, editor of Arnie TV Live. Good afternoon, or evening. <laughs> My name is Kirsten Gunter, and I am a reporter as well as an anchor on Arnie TV Live. Hi, my name is Kaylin Shaw, and I am the editor-in-chief of the Sabre Online and uh, anchor for r and Live. Not anchor, but reporter for r and Live. My name is AJ Chambers, and I'm the director of Convergence Media and the advisor of r and TV Live. For the second year James in a row. James Shad, resident. <laughs> freelance model. Thank you. We forgot your certificate, by the way. For the second year in a row, r &E TV Live has been named a Pacemaker winner by the National Scholastic Press Association. The Pacemaker is the oldest and most prestigious award given in scholastic journalism. It is unofficially compared to the high school equivalent of the Pulitzer Prize. 
The students produce a 10 to 15 minute show four times a week covering school news and local and national news. The production team submitted three of their shows to come up with the winning result. So we're gonna take your picture, but then you're gonna stay right here. And the furniture mover. <laughs> Yes, they're going to stay. Uh, and we want you to stay right there because uh, we also want to recognize some broadcast students who graduated last year. Now, I don't think either one of them are here, but we're hoping... Um, one a mother is here. Wade Fletcher was in your group last year and Caleb Daniels. And we were hoping that Caleb's mother, Melinda Daniels, could come tonight. But she can't, but we still wanted to recognize those um, two students. Caleb and Wade won first place for their broadcast news story about the May 1st teacher rally at the State House. They competed with hundreds of entries and were named the top story in the nation. This team also won the National Emmy for their senior picture commercial. We know they are continuing their success in college and we wish them all the best. So we're glad that we can, can say that even after they've left us. Uh, now I'm gonna ask another Convergence Media studi student, Natalie Davis, to join us up here. Is Natalie here? There she comes. Natalie works on the print side on the award-winning Natalia, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Natalia works on the print side on the award-winning archive yearbook. She won first place for academic spread at the South Carolina School Press Association Conference. We're, we're adding to the group. Hang on. <laughs> Lastly, we have one more recognition that I think everyone will agree is well-deserved. Your leader and advisor, A.J. Chambers, who also serves as the District Teacher of the Year, has been named Distinguished Broadcast Advisor by the Journalism Education Association. Nine years ago, Mr. Chambers took a good broadcast program at Richland Northeast High School and turned it into a great one. The success of the program is centered in giving the students ownership of what they produce, managing their resources, and working with one another. He has turned students from publicists to journalists and makes it clear that students don't produce work to win awards, but they produce award-winning work. Congratulations, Mr. Chambers, and to the entire Convergence Media team. You might be in the lobby, but I'll take Okay, now you can sit down. <laughs> we almost had them programmed. We have four high school football standouts we want to call forward uh, right now. Amon Green, and we don't think he's coming, we think he has the flu. And Cam Atkins from Westwood High School, Tyson Player and Chandler Muller from Ridgeview High School, along with their coaches, Perry Parks and Matt Quinn, and athletic directors, Brian Rosefield, whom I don't believe is here, and Jason Powell, and principals, Dr. Cheryl Guy and Dr. Brenda Mack Foxworth. You will join us up front. These young men were invited to play in the prestigious 2019 Touchstone Energy Cooperative's North-South All-Star Football Game. They joined an elite group of players from around the state on December 14th in Myrtle Beach. All four athletes played on the North team. Proceeds from the game are turned into scholarships for the children of the state's athletic coaches. Congratulations on your outstanding football success in Richland, too, and for representing us so well. <laughs> Congratulations.
<laughs> In addition to top athletes, the district is proud of its talented musicians. Students from four of our high schools auditioned and were selected to play in the South Carolina Youth Philharmonic Orchestra. All of their names appear up on the screen, and we'll call them up by school accompanied by their band and or orchestra teacher and principal and let them introduce themselves and tell us which instrument they play. So from Blythewood High School, if you are on our list for the Philharmonic Orchestra, please come up. Uh, the Blythewood High School Orchestra is under the direction of orchestra teacher Julie Russell and band teacher Quintus Wrighton. Can you introduce yourself and what instruments you play? Um, my name is Michael Gaither and I play the tuba. My name is Sam Cathcart and I play the violin. My name is Jessica Standerwick and I play the violin. My name is Rose White and I play the violin. My name is Eve Blum and I play the viola. My name is Matt Sharma, I'm the head bus driver. <laughs> I'm James Shade, I play the piccolo. <laughs> And next, we would like to um, bring up Richland Northeast. Okay, you can do a, a Blythewood picture. Hang on just a minute. Now, you stay there, and we're going to bring up Richland Northeast. Under the direction of orchestra teacher Irina Seath and band teacher Roderick Henderson. So... RNA students. Yeah, go ahead. Martha. Yes. This is Dr. Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. If you would do me a favor, would you allow the Blythewood students to be seated and do each school individually? And then okay. when they when we're done, we can get a group photo outside of all the students okay. so that they each have an individual photo of their school. That's I appreciate great. that. Thank you so That's much. That's great. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, uh, my name is, oh. yeah, my name is Eudora Jackman and I play the cello. My name is Owen Catron and I also play the cello. Thank you. Ridgeview High School under the direction of orchestra teacher Philip Pagel and band director Dustin King. Students from Ridgeview, please come up. Um, my name is Sean Cyprian and I play the viola. I'm Cameron Borum and I play the cello. I'm Shia Cyprian and I play the viola. I'm James Watson and I play bass and tuba. I'm Samuel Randazzo and I play trombone. Okay. Smile for the camera. <laughs> You're a model, you should know that. <laughs> Thank you. From Spring Valley High School under the direction of orchestra teacher Dr. Janine Parnell and band teacher David Allison. Students from Spring Valley. My name is Timothy Johnson, and I play the clarinet. My name is Samuel Grant, and I play clarinet. <laughs> My name is Josephine Gardner. I play the trumpet. My name is Cyril Witch and Polly, and I play the oboe. My name is Lucy Ellisor, and I play the cello. My name is Ethan Sosa, and I play the violin. My name is Alani Frazier, and I play viola. My name is John Hicks, and I play the clarinet. 
My name is Zachary Huang, and I play the flute. Hi, guys. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come together so you can have your picture made. Yeah. Maybe she can level up. I mean, stack them. Squeeze in a little. Yeah. It's warm in here, but we're going to be with right. Westwood High School um, under the direction of orchestra teacher Chris Miller, uh, Tamia Jackson, who plays the violin. And we're not sure Tamia is here, but we wanted to recognize her as well. Uh, and just so you know, um, the Philharmonic, which was founded in 1964, offers exceptional orchest orchestral playing experiences for young people throughout the Midlands. Students have the opportunity to perform professional level repertoire and occasionally side by side with the professional South Carolina Philharmonic. So this is quite an honor. We look forward to hearing all of these students that you have just met perform, whether it's on the stages of Richland II, in the Coker Center, or in Carnegie Hall. Right. We'll look forward to that. Thank you and congratulations to you. We have several teachers and administrators who have received impressive recognitions. I'd like to call up Ms. Uh, Dr. Twanisha Garner, Assistant Principal at Langford Elementary, along with her principal, Cassina Jackson. Dr. Garner has been named the South Carolina Association of School Administrators Elementary Assistant Principal of the Year. Dr. Garner is an outstanding leader who is well respected and valued by the students, parents, faculty, and staff at Langford Elementary School. According to her principal, Ms. Jackson, Dr. Garner supports teachers as they educate future leaders. She champions the school's commitment to provide personalized, authentic learning experiences for all students. Dr. Garner fo focuses on an instructional environment that strives for continuous improvement and high academic achievement for all students. Congratulations, yes. Dr. Garner. And next, Valente Gibson of Jackson Creek Elementary. Please come forward along with your principal, Dr. Sabina Masso-Taylor. Mr. Gibson has been awarded the Social Justice Award through the National Council of Teachers of English Early Childhood Assembly. This award honors an exceptional early childhood educator activist who demonstrates qualities of wisdom, courage, determination, perseverance, knowledge, and strategy to work of a um, to the work of addressing issues of justice in and out of institutions of education. Mr. Gibson is a fifth grade teacher who offers his students opportunities to participate in civic-minded education by constantly using a number of culturally sustaining approaches to teaching. On any given day, students might hear uh, Mr. Valente or Valente seamlessly integrate historical and contemporary issues in the classroom. Congratulations to you, Mr. Gibson. Taylor, you stay there. You stay there. <laughs> uh, and you'll be joined by Jesse Williams, assistant principal at Pontiac Elementary, and his principal, Dr. Katie Barber. 
Dr. Maso Taylor and Mr. Williams have been recognized by their alma mater, the University of South Carolina, for their extraordinary commitment to students, their communities, and the education profession. They received the Outstanding Community Partners Award at the recent USC Homecoming celebration. Dr. Maso Taylor was honored for implementing numerous initiatives that honor the histories and cultures of her students, including a Hispanic Heritage Celebration. She has built partnerships with community organizations such as the United Way and the Midlands Reading Consortium to help support her students. Mr. Williams has organized two mentoring programs, Distinguished Young Gentlemen and Sophisticated Young Ladies, aimed at teaching important life skills to fifth grade girls and boys and creating practical opportunities to apply these skills in their school and surrounding community. He is also director of a motivational ministry which is designed to help students shine academically while furthering their faith. Congratulations and thank you to both of you. Dr. Maso Taylor, let's go back. <laughs> we have yet another recognition for you and your school. At this time, we want to honor our top schools and centers who raised money for the 2019 United Way campaign. With us tonight to help us is the Senior Director of Financial Stability for the United Way of the Midlands, Jennifer Moore. <laughs> We will call out our top schools and then invite the principal and campaign coordinator to come forward. For the top elementary school, it's hands down Jackson Creek. In addition to Principal Maso Taylor, we have campaign coordinator Jennifer Taffel, thank you, to join us. Jackson Creek raised $8,200, a record amount for any school. Almost every first grade and kindergarten teacher gave at leadership levels as they see the importance and impact the new United Way program, Resilient Richland, is having on their students. The school also had 100% participation. So way to go, Jackson Creek. <laughs> Now, if you'll just slide over for just a second, and we're going to call up Longleaf Middle School. Longleaf is at the top, uh, is the top middle school, and we have Principal Robert Jackson and Campaign Coordinator Jennifer Bull. Jennifer's not here. Although most of our middle schools have good campaigns, Longleaf is always in the lead, raising more than $5,000 for the campaign. Year after year, the pattern and commitment of giving remains strong, so congratulations to Longleaf Middle School. Martha. Yes, sir. This is Dr. Davis. <laughs> Good evening. I just well, I couldn't see, so I just wanted to make sure that we're giving each school an opportunity to have a individual pictures. individual school shot and then a group shot. So yes. thank you so much. So Sabina, we'll if you'll move over. <laughs> well, we want you to stay up there. You can just slide over to the side. All right, Ish, you have. I'm good. Okay. All right, so Longleaf, slide to the side. <laughs> You've all heard that if you give a job to the busiest person, you'll get the best results. Richland Northeast had a great campaign this year as District Teacher of the Year A.J. Chambers headed up the campaign, along with support from his principal, Dr. Sabrina Suber. r &E had a 30% increase over the year before, making it the top high school in the district. Great job. RNA. All right, Arnie, slide to the side. Finally, we call up the folks from the W.R. Rogers Center, Principal Bobby Cunningham and Campaign Chair Dewana Washington. No? We'll talk about them anyway. <laughs> we want to recognize them as the top center in the district. Year after year, they continually have at least a 10% increase and 100% participation. They won't settle for less. They are small but mighty, and we want to thank them for their continuous support. So thank you, the W.R. Rogers Center. Okay. 
overall, it was another great year of giving in Richland, too. Our employees know of the great needs in our community, and we strive to continue to be the premier district when it comes to United Way giving. So I'm going to ask Ms. Moore if she has a few remarks for us. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having us here. So Dr. Davis, Chairman Manning, and board, thank you so much for having us here tonight. I'm Jennifer Moore with United Way and Christian Markle, also with United Way. Um, we are thrilled to be here in truly the premier school district in the Midlands. Um, what your employees have done, so a 1,500 strong employee gifts to United Way of over $116,000 going back to the community. And we are so grateful, not only for those generous, generous donations, but the amazing work that your staff does every single day to improve the lives of young people in our community. We are deeply, deeply grateful. We want to do a couple special recognitions. You've already mentioned um, Jackson Creek under the amazing direction of Dr. Masa Taylor. Um, that is not only the highest giving school district in Richland too, it's the highest in all of the Midlands. Awesome. The entire Midlands, yes. <laughs> A couple other special recognitions. We wanted to do a special thank you to Dr. Davis for not only serving on the Midlands team and providing leadership, but serving on our board of directors as well and giving your time and your amazing talents to our work as well. And a special um, thanks to Shelly Kriegshaber for your amazing leadership with the campaign, the energy that goes into that every year. Um, we want to just kind of talk a little bit about some of our programs as well, um, just to kind of talk about the strong connections that we're so proud to have with the district. So we wanted to give you three quick examples. Um, our Midlands Reading Consortium program is in four schools here in Richland, um, too. So we're in Pontiac, Condor, Joseph Keels, and Jackson Creek. And that's a one-on-one -on -one tutoring and mentoring program um, for striving readers to really ignite that love of reading and to provide that positive, caring adult um, in their lives. We have our Well Partners program that serves over 300 children each year with free dental care um, with transportation provided by healthy learners. Um, and then our newest initiative, which is Resilient Richland, which we're so proud to partner with the district. Um, with Resilient Richland, we've been able to fund specialized training for teachers to um, have uh, advanced trauma-informed practices in the classrooms. And then our most recent project is partnering with Jackson Creek to have a resiliency team. The team has a new behavioral interventionist working with our kindergarten grades and a social worker to help families navigate community resources that they may need. It's an amazing school. Um, we, it's an amazing district, but it's an amazing school and we're so lucky and proud to work with everyone here and all, the wonderful families and parents here too. Um, so thank you so much to the district. We, this is an amazing place. Um, thank you so much and thank you for tonight having us. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moore. We see the good things that United Way is doing in our district for our children, and we appreciate your support. Now, before I give this last or talk about this last recognition, I want to take this opportunity to mention that January is South Carolina School Board Appreciation Month. This is a time to show our appreciation and salute you, our school board, for all you do to prepare today's students to be tomorrow's leaders. Too often we forget about the personal sacrifices school board members make. They spend hours in meetings and on committees and advocating for our schools with elected politicians by speaking out against budget cuts or pushing for policy and program reforms. Each one of you brings a special talent and a path to leadership to Richland School District too. During the month of January, the State School Board Association is honoring board members across the state who have reached milestones in their service on local school boards. Tonight, Mr. Manning, Please come forward to receive your 10-year pin. As you know, Mr. Manning was elected to the board in November 2010 and re-elected in 2014 and 2018. Mr. Manning, thank you for your dedication, service, and leadership to our school district and to our students. Thank you. concludes our recognitions. Thank you. Uh, yes, the schools, the musicians, if you'll go out to the stairway there, Ish will meet you out there and take a group shot of everybody. I'm sorry. And a United Way group picture too. So everybody to the lobby. <laughs>
It's uh, always incredible to have so many recognitions. Our students and our staff are just doing tremendous things in the district. I really appreciate the effort, and, and that's really just the tip of the iceberg of all the wonderful things that happen in Richland School District, too. So Maybe great I'll to have um, a recognitions program uh, for this evening. Um, next, and I also want to thank everybody for the opportunity. Ten years, that's a decade. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to still have uh, to be here. Thank you very much. Um, all right. Sorry. Uh, current agenda. Consent agenda. If I can have a motion to approve our consent agenda. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Mackey. I move to approve our consent agenda. Right. Motion's been made by Ms. Mackey. Do I have a second? Seconded by Mr. Shad. Is there any discussion? With no discussion, we'll have the vote at this time. And we are having some technical difficulties, so I cannot see how the motion uh, goes. So I'm going to just request Ms. Sherman to help me with that. Is it coming up for y'all? It did, but I look like some people were having issues. Yours did not. Did you refresh already and come back in? Hit refresh and join the meeting again. Okay. Ms. Agostini, you... <laughs> yes, okay. Okay. So the motion is unanimous, passes unanimously. All right. Thank you very much. We will now move on to the school focus. Uh, actually, before that, Dr. Davis, um, I want to take um, this opportunity to recognize a couple folks. I think I saw Ms. Shelley Williams, the chair of the Richland Two Charter High School, come in. Are you still here, Shelley? Yeah, thank you very much for being here. I also want to recognize um, Colonel Hankins. Uh, Colonel, if you want to stand up, thank you. Colonel Hankins is our new um, new representative from the fort. Uh, so he'll be here at all of our meetings. And uh, we have a, a great relationship with the fort. As I told you earlier, we're excited. Um, General Beagle will be here for another year. Uh, we have a tremendous relationship with both he and his wife and a uh, fantastic leader in the district. And we're glad y'all are growing. So our economy appreciates that as well. Um, but uh, thank you for being with us. Look forward to having you at our meetings. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, all right. Now, Dr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, members of the board and to the public, um, we have for school focus CFI and Dr. Chris Haas and his third grade students from CFI will share how they have transformed learning into civic action. <laughs> Get the microphone. They are. Yeah. Okay. Good evening, Chairman Manning, members of the school board, and Good Dr. Evening. Davis. We are so proud to be here tonight representing our school and the outstanding work that happens in our classrooms to root the learning that we do as readers, as writers, as mathematicians, and social scientists in the needs of our community, particularly when addressing issues of inequity and social justice. Tonight we're going to share with you a piece of this work. I'm joined by four of my amazing third graders who are poised tonight to tell you how they've spent the past year, the past year, using their academic studies to address inequity in our community and make our city a better place. And we're going to begin with Raleigh. Hi, my name is Raleigh. Our mornings usually begin with morning meeting. Last February, Dr. Haas asked Maya and I if you'd like to share a news article in the state newspaper. The article told how there's only one downtown street sign named after a woman, and that is Lazy Lady Street. 
The article also told how there's only 96 there's 96% of street signs named after men and only 4% named after women. That is a big difference. <laughs> and it's actually in the whole city. So we shared what we thought and we shared what we were feeling. So what I mean by that is like if you're feeling sad or if you're feeling mad about it. And Dr. Haas asked us if we'd like to learn more about it and how can we change it. Hi, my name is Maya. We invited a journalist to our classroom to help us understand this better. She told us meeting with people from the Women's Rights and Empowerment Network. We invited as many women from our community as possible. Dr. Grant board members, teachers, parents, and more came. Not all, but some did. We learned more than 20 important women who deserve to be remembered. My name is Kirsten, and after a few months of researching, we decided to share this information with other people. First, we made a presentation to all our parents and the whole school. Then, then, we made a presentation to teachers at an education conference last April. We invited Mayor Benjamin into our classroom and made a presentation to him as well. Dr. Haas traveled to Baltimore to t share this information with other people, for teachers from across the country. Last month, we went to city council to share our ideas and concerns with the city council. Here's a video from WIS showing a little bit about our presentation. All right, well, here's a fabulous story we told you about yesterday. Some of our youngest citizens are taking matters into their own hands. I love this. Third <laughs> graders from Richland District 2's Center for Inquiry have some issues after learning uh, that a lot of streets in Columbia, hardly any, literally only one named after a woman. So we told you a little bit about this yesterday, and right after our newscast for city council meeting last night, the girls, along with a lot of their class members, took their concerns directly to city council. I was really nervous, but when I got to the microphone, I was just like looking at my paper, focused on the words, just reading down, <laughs> making sure it made sense, and making sure I didn't read like a robot. <laughs> All right, Kirsten, you better do it, Go young girl. lady. Uh, the kids uh, said they learned a lot from the mayor and the other city council members, and they're hoping that the city council will take up their advice oh. and, and make some considerations. Mayor Steve Benjamin uh, expressed his delight to have the students at council council meeting last night and after starting the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, they stepped up to the podium. The classmates classmates shared why they think uh, the city and city leaders should consider naming more streets after women and making sure that there's better representation. Uh, and they even shared their research that they've learned about prominent women in history in hopes of named after them. While the students say they are happy that they had an opportunity to speak with the mayor, they say it really was not the easiest thing to do. But they did it. They did it. They did it. And this is not something that they just took up kind of happenstance. They started work on right. this project last year, did the research, made their recommendations, uh, told city leaders about their project, looked for a time to go visit city council meetings. So this is a civics lesson mm -hmm. um, and so many other things wrapped up all in one. Listen, if this isn't grassroots action, Absolutely. I don't know what it Absolutely. Is. Third graders researching for a project and taking it to city council. That is fabulous. All good, right. for those, good for those young ladies. We'll keep you posted on what comes out of that yes. city council meeting. Yes. <laughs> Tiffany, some things we accomplished so far is, is we learned a lot about women's history, learned how to get involved in issues that are important to us, learn how local government works, learn to expect others to listen to us, especially adults. What I mean by that is we didn't want adults to just think that we were cute and funny about the situation. We actually wanted to think that we, they were adults to think that we were serious about the situation. And we made our community a little bit better. Again? There's a, there's going to be a new neighborhood in downtown, and they're and they're going to be revealing woman street names, street names named after women.
<laughs> they thought they were done. I will say that if none of those street names are named after women, we will be back at City Hall again, right? And we'll speak again. So of all of the work that they did, and this was not something from a newspaper article when we went down to City Hall. This was 11 months ago. We spent a lot of time researching. We brought as many people in as possible. We don't want to run blindly toward every new threat. We want to make sure we know what's going on, what the situation is and not only complain about it, but come up with solutions. And that's absolutely what we work to do. So in all of this, I think my favorite moments wasn't necessarily the girls speaking to the city council. It was the interviews they gave to the press where they were just speaking off the cuff. And we had great quotes like Raleigh said, things just really need to change and I'm gonna be the one that changes it. Or Tiffany saying, I just wanna be a role model for other kids, which I think is outstanding. So any questions? Board members' questions, uh, comments, Ms. Agostini. Uh, girls, I want to say that you were terrific. Um, I was thrilled last year when Dr. Haas reached out to me to, to, your class to, make, to make my nomination, and I have loved following your story. Great job. And Dr. Haas, thank you for inspiring and encouraging the, your students. Thank you. Ms. Mackey. I just want to say great job. Thank you for your advocacy, girl power. And You're welcome. And I want to especially commend you because sometimes when you get nervous, it's easy to stop, but you kept going. And I want to tell you that I'm so proud of you for working through your nervousness and keeping going. But good job. Thank you for sharing with us. You're welcome. Dr. Holmes. I am just so super proud of you girls. I, yeah, I'm, I'm the loud one. Yay! <laughs> I am so glad to see you young ladies standing up there because one of y'all are going to take my seat from me, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm so proud of you all. Thank you, Dr. Haas. Uh, you have done a fantastic job with these young ladies. I am so impressed. Kudos. <laughs> Thank you. She is the loud one. Um, <laughs> Dr. Caution Parker. I just want to say just outstanding work. I'm very proud of all of you. Just outstanding. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, uh, Dr. Eppin Johnson. Young ladies, I am extremely proud of all of you. You've done an excellent job. And Raleigh, go girl, a future <laughs> AKA. Your mom has really, <laughs> your mom has truly given you that leadership. So I know you're ready for J15 tomorrow, Raleigh. Thank you. <laughs> all right, Mr. Shad. I object, Delta uh -oh. Sigma Theta. <laughs> Sorority, ooh, ooh. J13. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Um, Shad. Dr. Haas, you did a wonderful job, as we always see, and now we see the fruits of your labor, so we appreciate all that you do um, for our, our students um, and for the community <clears throat> at large. Ladies, y'all did a fantastic job, and I hope that this new, new neighborhood has... Um, a woman's name on at least one of the streets. But if I have any type of pull, I can think of four good candidates right now to yeah. name. Absolutely. So, Thank you so much. Absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Davis. Uh, again, Dr. Has. Outstanding. Outstanding job of, of, of really instilling what learning is all about and putting it into action. Uh -huh. uh, parents, thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for raising courageous young ladies. Mm -hmm. Bold and proud, give your moms a thumbs up, um, mm -hmm. and encouraging them to voice their opinion in a civic way, in a civil way, mm -hmm. and demonstrating. There's a lot of us that can learn from watching how you handled, uh, you ladies handled that situation. And again, kudos to you all, the entire class, uh, for taking on this uh, this very important project. And I, I agree with Mrs. Chad. I, I think uh, pretty soon we'll see your names on a street somewhere. It will do us proud. Um, so, again, congratulations. And there's nothing bashful about y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so last, there's not really a ton to add except, you know, this is the power of a great teacher in our classroom. And this is the kind of work that goes on in our classrooms every day. Um, Dr. Hass, I know you're great about coming to the board and presenting, putting your students in front of us, giving them opportunities. Ladies, y'all did a fantastic job. You had a speaker come with you the last meeting to talk about um, our media centers. And we saw the response. The board voted unanimously to add dollars to our media centers um, so you're really making a big difference but we have so many teachers um, that really go above and beyond like yourself and it's truly incredible so thank you um, for being here for being part of Richland 2 the Richland 2 family 
And um, ladies, thank you again. There, uh, I think a lot of us, even the guys up here, have all female households. So we 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 love empower women. So thank y'all. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chair and, and boys. Yes, before I would also like to recognize um, just. Uh, Dr. Mueller as well for her outstanding leadership at CFI because she has to create the environment where her teachers feel comfortable taking on challenging topics like this and give them the the space uh, to um, be the best versions of themselves as well as inspiring those young ladies because she is an outstanding leader as well. So let's recognize her as well. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, next we have our public participation. And first on my list, um, Mr. Phil Pot. And I think you're coming to talk about the special meeting on January 7th. Uh, good evening, members of the board, Dr. Davis. Uh, I'm Gus Phil Pot. In high school, I played the bassoon. <laughs> and, uh, everybody always clapped, especially when it was finished. They hoped I wouldn't start again. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to speak about last week's meeting, the January 7th special called board meeting. Um, there's an excellent video uh, online that the district recorded. I would encourage each member to watch the entire two hour video and um, observe how the meeting went. And um, the camera view last week was of the full board. So rather than just seeing two members at a time and the person who was speaking, the camera often showed the full board. And so it's possible to see some of the things that were distracting um, to the board members. I'll not enumerate those. The biggest error in last week's meeting where the misleading information presented to the board about the $9.1 million expenditure from the 2018-19 budget surplus and the rush of the board to spend $9.1 million without adequate study and understanding. It wasn't an investment, it was an expense. Confusing and incomplete terms were presented to you, but no one questioned them. Undertaking that discussion and voted a special called meeting was wrong for several reasons. Board members were not supplied with the full details far enough ahead of the meeting to make an informed analysis. The board was not informed, the public had no opportunity to give input, and there was no public participation at the meeting. Robert's rules of order reads, the reason for special meetings is to deal with important matters that may arise between regular meetings and that urgently require action before the next meeting. The administration's expressed desire for expediency is not the same as urgency. The board had accumulated a $16.9 million surplus. Let's call it a rainy day fund. Usually public bodies can't get away with that, but taxpayers are lazy, they don't pay attention, or they feel helpless. On January 17th, the superintendent mentioned the possibility of an economic downturn at least twice. Most organizations don't blow their rainy day funds when facing a downturn. There was no discussion of an option to return that surplus to taxpayers. So I, I invite you in the future to not conduct um, that type of business at special called meetings, but instead to do it only at regular meetings and to adequately post the information on the school's website. So for example, tonight there is a special obligation bond resolution under old business action requested. The text of that resolution is not attached to the agenda. So we the public have no idea what is going to be considered tonight and cannot provide input on it. Thank you. Thank you. And we normally don't respond, but that resolution has been posted to the website at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, Mr. Steve Newsom, did I say that correctly? If not, I apologize. Sorry. Um, on legislation. Um, hey. um, uh, Chairman Manning, yes. members of the board, Dr. Davis, uh, we, uh, Lisa Ellis and I came, we were gonna kind of piggyback on each other, but we're going in reverse, so um, this will make more sense after what she says, but um, I just wanted to bring up some specific uh, issues that are gonna face school boards with the legislation that's pending, uh, S-419, which, was, which is being kind of fast-tracked through the Senate. Um, some specifics that really kind of stood out to me, which I'm sure you guys are aware of, but I just think it needs to be said. 
um, that 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 bill would mandate a lot of specific pedagogical choices that we need to be making at the school level. For example, it mandates the use of Lexile scores, which the NCT and the American Library Association and others are really against. Um, but even if we we're going to use that, I feel like that needs to be a classroom or a school or even a district decision. It makes it much easier for the state to dissolve and replace elected school boards. Um, and once that's done, and that's going to be based well, there's a several ways that can happen, but one of the main ways is through low test scores. Um, then those boards can't be reelected for three years. Um, so it really takes away the democratic process from people who want to elect their own boards, makes a lot of decisions about the school calendar at additional days without, um, without mandating that the funding come for those days. So even though, like I would expect, they might pay school sal teacher salaries for those days, what's going to happen to the cost of operating the school buildings for five additional days? Um, it puts a lot more emphasis on test scores. It has a lot of unfunded mandates. So, um, And I think Lisa's going to say something similar, but we're just hoping that you guys and on all boards will um, do what you can to make your voices heard. It's going through the Senate very quickly, so we're hoping that it doesn't pass as, as written. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lisa Ellis? Sorry, I didn't realize there was an order. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Um, my original plan for speaking tonight was to give a quick thanks. However, in light of the conversation occurring at the State House with the beginning of the 2020 legislative session today, I plan to speak briefly on that as well. Thank you to the board, Dr. Davis, and all those who had a hand in the decision-making process in regard to the $16 million surplus from last fiscal year. Choosing to spend money on employee salaries, classroom supplies, and media centers demonstrates the district's commitment to retaining its teachers and supporting staff. The key to a high-quality education is a strong teacher in the classroom and the support from building school building staff. This is a step in the right direction, and I'm thankful for the work done. Today, the Senate, South Carolina Senate moved S-419 to the floor and approved to move it forward by special order. Um, what that means is they start tomorrow with it. The bill has been touted as the bill to reform education, and yet it does little to fix the crisis in South Carolina schools today. SC for Ed has reviewed the bill multiple times, and we see that the best course of action is to kill this bill and instead pass smaller bills that will positively affect student learning, as well as provide solutions for the teacher retention crisis. Our hope is that you will speak to everyone you can about the problematic nature of this bill and urge them to contact their legislators to make their voices heard. Thank you for your continued support of teachers, both in and out of the classroom. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have Cynthia Levy-Johnson. Good evening. Good evening. Dr. Davis, Chairman Manning, and the entire school board. My name is Cynthia Levy-Johnson. I am a media specialist um, at Longleaf Middle School. I also have two children that currently attend um, Richland II School. Mm. I want to take this time to say thank you for being incredibly fiscally smart with district funds. Our school libraries have been without funding for a few years now. To make up for this lack in funding, I proactively searched, applied for, and applied and received over $8,399 in grants to continu continuously create a collection that is diverse and inclusive. With the funds that the district is providing in the um, one-time allotment, I am able to move closer to a library collection that it includes literature in which students can see themselves reflected. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Uh, next, I have Bingle, uh, sorry, Billy Singletary. Dr. Davis, Chairman Manning. Good evening. Educators and family members. Um, I'm coming to speak on something, being a proud graduate of Richland School District 1. I want you to understand my commitment to all of our students, not just in District 2, but throughout this entire state. I was deeply concerned when I heard late yesterday afternoon that Richland Northeast High School, after all the cares that they've gone through, after all the struggles and battles, 
to try to get parity along the lines of the same high schools or now facing the possibility of the stadium not being adequately funded to be able to house playoff games. Um, I want you to understand, I think earlier today you saw an example of Richland Northeast and the excellent that they have um, towards the students and the education. 40 years is a long time, and I know Northeast is coming up on that benchmark real soon. I can't imagine a high school being without a qualified or adequate stadium. I'm quite sure all of us went to a high school that had a qualified stadium at some point. I'm asking you all right now, because the way the bond was originally structured, it had to meet approval first for you all to make the loan. Second, we had to go through the referendum to have the, um, the pass the vote to have a stadium. I hope in your hearts that you all will not let these students fail with the smaller particulars. They excel with little. I'm asking you just to make the playing field even. Richland Northeast would suffer financial by not having a stadium that could qualify to handle playoffs. Richland Northeast would have to find alternative ways to provide adequate uh, supplements for their students and their consideration. Sometimes it's not the bigger things that you do. And believe me, I understand your jobs are very difficult. And I respect everyone in this room for everything that you do. But sometimes it's the smaller little things that you know you can do. So I'm asking after 40 years, 37 and a half, please, please, please stick to the original agreement and make sure that the stadium for Richland Northeast, as well as Ridgeview High School, is properly funded that it will hold a playoff game at any high school in Richmond School District 2. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. We next have Mr. Danny Cottrell. Chairman Manning, Dr. Davis, members of the board, I apologize. I had a um, speech prepared to go through that outlined many disappointments that I had. Um, however, prior to this meeting, I was provided an update. You know that I've spoken before regarding our concerns mm -hmm. with our facilities at Spring Valley regarding our track and field program. Um, I'm confident <clears throat> at this point regarding the update that I have received. I'm looking forward to additional updates. Um, I will tell you, though, this process and attending board members um, has challenged me. Um, I feel that I've been a involved parent within the school district. Um, this has been challenging, to say it the least, um, regarding this service. However, I do thank you for letting me present back in November regarding our concerns with, this, um, with our facilities. And again, for allowing me today, and I'm looking forward to the additional updates. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on our agenda, we have our legislative update, and I have asked Ms. Mackey to provide some updates to us from the South Carolina School Boards Association. Thank you, Chairman Manning. Actually, uh, Mr. Nutzel and Ms. Alice actually touched on some of the things that I wanted to share tonight. Um, the South Carolina State School Board Association Board of Trustees had a meeting um, Friday and Saturday, and sounded the alarm with regard to Senate Bill 419. Um, and I'll, I'll go through some of some of the issues that we had concerns with, but there are there are a myriad of them. First of all, it has um, been reduced from an 80 plus page document to a 60 plus page document, but they're still not the stakeholders at the table who need to be there with regard to decisions that are being made. It's titled, it's called the South Carolina Career Opportunity and Access for All Act. Um, it was amended, the title was amended as well, December 12th, 2019. Um, the, we, were, we were told that there was, they were going to fast track it and read it across the desk today at the Senate, and they did. And with a, by a vote of 40 to four, um, the bill was fast-tracked by special order, which means that it's going to, it's going to move very quickly. Um, there were 40 people who voted in favor of it being fast-tracked. There were four senators who did not. Um, 
two of whom are from the Midlands area, Senator Mike Fanning, Senator Mia McLeod. Uh, the other two were Senator Shane Martin and uh, Senator Tom Corbin, who voted against fast tracking the bill because it needs some work. And the stakeholders, the people who are the intended end users, um, are not seated adequately at the table. So it's been reduced by 20 pages, but it's by the same people who um, drafted the first version. Um, one of the some of the things that were of issue were state takeovers of school of school districts because once there are takeovers of school districts arbitrarily, then teachers and administrators answer directly to the state instead of um, local local elected members. Um, there was a concern from the South Carolina School Board Association, who's advocating very hard to return districts to maintain uh, local district um, leadership at the local level, because once it goes to the state board of education and school districts are taken over, then um, the process for making changes and for having voices heard becomes a little more um, complicated, for lack of a better word. Um, school board training, the, the uh, state board of education wants to add another layer of training for school boards in addition to the, layer, the, the, the South Carolina School Board uh, training that's already in place. Um, there is um, a proviso that's been proposed for teacher annual contract days to, to be increased from 190 to 195, subject to state funding. Um, there are issues with regard to, remove, to removing leadership at local school board leaders. Um, and I think Mr. Shadwick thought there was a half credit mandate uh, in for high school finance to be as an elective. And there were teachers who had advocated for that to be something that's mandatory and not an elective. But um, the, those, those that, the, the powers that be have, have, have uh, man, advocated that it be an elective instead of a mandate. And also high poverty districts are eligible eligible to participate in pilot a pilot program wherein 10 up to 10% uh, of non-certified teachers can uh, teach in high poverty districts as long as they have five years experience in, in a certain field. Um, that may or may not be a good idea, but there's not been one teacher who has been asked about that. So my um, appeal to that is that people talk to your legislators, talk to teachers, write letters, do what you're doing. Um, and for everyone who is advocating, tell somebody else too as well, because there are people who are listening and there are people who are trying to slow the bill down. Not that it's a bad bill, because of course, um, I think everyone's intention is good that education be a priority in South Carolina, but without um, teachers and educators at the forefront who are crafting that legislation, then we're gonna be, end up being right where we were last year, which was um, it not passing at all. Another um, focus that the South Carolina School Board Association is pushing this year is civil discourse. Dr. Davis, you made a comment to the Girl Power team that was here earlier, thanking them for taking on this matter in a civil way. One of the, one of the initiatives that the South Carolina School Board Association um, wants to tout and push forth is creating space for democracy in a civil way. Oftentimes people don't hear what you're saying because of how you're saying it. So five of the things that the School Board Association wants to focus on from a legend is meeting board structure, continuing education, managing emotions and composure, um, elective and appropriate social media, and a feedback loop, which is controlling your message, controlling your message and controlling your temperament at that. Um, three of the quotes that I wrote down this weekend were, our lens is created by our experiences, but hurting other people is always a personal choice. Our goal is to disagree without being disagreeable. And finally, most people have more compassion than we give, than we give ourselves credit for. I have another comment. May I, talk, may I make a personal point of privilege with sure. regard to the South Carolina School Board Association? Yes, ma'am. Okay, actually, actually it's the South Carolina School Improvement Council. Um, there are 10 South Carolina public schools that have been named to the 2020 honor roll for their significant efforts to foster civic engagement in public, public education. Three of those schools are from right here in the Midlands, Bookman Road Elementary, Pontiac Elementary, Round Top Elementary. So they're honor roll schools, but we're hoping that one of them is going to be the grand winner for the Dick and Tunky Riley um, School Improvement Council Service Award. Richland, too, has a long history of having winners um, that win the Dick and Tunky Riley Civil um, School Improvement Council Engagement Award, and the reason I wanted to mention that as well is because that's also um, a poster board uh, award with regard to civil discourse and handling manners in a civil way.
Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. And have we made mention, uh, thank you, Ms. Mackey, have we also made mention Mr. Shad was, um, was just installed as the vice chair? Of the uh, of the school boards association black caucus, um, so congratulations on that uh, leadership role within Lots. our school boards association in the state, and uh, excited that that you're there and that we have a voice um, at the state level with that. I apologize, I should have mentioned that. Absolutely, congratulations, Mr. Shad, and Thank I think you. three of the. the your executive officers are from the Midlands. Midlands yeah, yes. the chair is from Richland One, Cheryl Hinton Harris. And the, um, Midlands, and the Midlands region the Midland is Sylvia Harrison and Sylvia from, Harrison from, from Fairfield. Fairfield. So, yes, congratulations, Mr. Shad. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, next. Yes, sir. If I may. If yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Please. On the, that's fine. That's for questions. Yeah, questions or comments. Thank I'm happy you, Ms. to entertain. Thank you, Ms. Mackey and, and Mr. Chair and my colleagues. Um, in light of the urgency with which we have and the short window of time and we are saying that we are advocates for education um, in particular in times past we've talked about being advocates um, especially on the state level i'm wondering if we as a board um, however we feel about this bill we may like certain parts of it, we may not like other parts but um, mr chair i'm not sure if we would like to make some type of a public statement and really very quickly just so they will know um, where we stand. I'm not necessarily saying that we go to a vote, but at least we can kind of get a consensus as to where we stand with regard to S419. Um, and I'm always of the mindset that if you are silent, then that means that you are assenting to whatever is before you. And as many of my colleagues around the state have said, especially with regard to school board members, because we are advocating for students, for teachers, for everyone involved in education, but in particular with regard to school boards, and especially those who um, have been elected by their constituency to remove that democratic process, that decision-making from them with regard to state takeover. And this is just me talking for right now, um, but I think others share my view that um, I think it is undemocratic to do that. Um, and as I understand it, the governor is the only one that can remove school board members for cause. Okay? But if this particular bill passes, um, that will expand on how that's done by our state superintendent. Um, whether it's Molly Spearman or whoever else might be in that position for years to come and decades to come. So I would hope that we would speak with one voice um, and give some type of um, statement to them so that they at least know where we stand with regard to at least the majority of this bill. Um, but, you know, I'm welcome to hear what you all may say about that. Mr. Shad, if I can respond, oh, Mr. Mackey, Chad, may I yes. respond to, yes, to one of the things that you said um, with regard to state takeovers for school board members, it's not some lobby for school board members to all keep their jobs. It's so that local school districts are represented locally and are adequately. And there is some talk of actually um, election laws being broken by people who are duly elected to, to the board. And then there is, but that's another subject for another time and we'll have an update that we share with you all in a few weeks with regard to that. Um, there are legislators that call me, you know, lo local at the state house level as well about how we feel about certain matters. Um, I th and I thank Dr. Nuzum and, and, and Ms. Ellis for, for, you know, staying on top of that. But there, we do get questions from time to time about how we feel. And I know there are seven board members and that we're each individual board members. But as a collective, it is helpful to have some sort of statement or something that, that our, our elected officials can, can readily have available rather than calling each of us to find out how we feel, at least on this matter. And I know for the South Carolina School Board Association um, perspective, you know, we have some literature. And actually, I'm going to send it to all the board members tonight and anybody who wants a copy. I can make sure that you have a copy of some of the bullet ports that I made tonight, but it, it is helpful to have um, something that tells how we feel about it as a voice so that our elected officials in a moment's notice can know where we stand on this issue, especially this one, because it's so impactful to so many. Um, and, and I know, Dr. Holmes, you have your, you your mic lit, but I, I would like to ask um, Miss uh, Mackey and Mr. Shad, since you both have sort of formal roles on the school boards association, if you would draft something, um, maybe work with administration, and if you will submit that draft 
uh, to the board for consideration. Um, I know as uh, we have talked about this in the past, sort of having a board voice, not yes. just individual voices, we may need to take it to a vote just so that we can kind of get full consensus of the board as a, you know, the majority of the board. We may not get everybody on board with every piece, but if you'll present something, let's take some steps to to actually um, have something yeah, that we all can get behind. Happy to. Um, Dr. Holmes. I just want to say I'm glad that we're going to do that um, because I think it is imperative that we have to stand up and say that we are against these things that are going on at the state level. Um, if we don't make a stand and make a statement, what does that say about what we feel? So I agree with that. I'd like for us to do that as a collective, although we may have differing opinions on how to handle it. I think the, the bit, but I would like to see us do that. And if we do not do that, I just want to publicly say, I do not support that because this is a democracy. And, and the last time I checked, everybody up, that's up there at the State House was elected. And, and as you know, we don't like everything that they do, but we're not talking about stripping them of their electoral right and stripping people of their opinions and rights to vote. So how dare they? How dare they feel that they have the right to strip you as the public for who you decide you want to represent you? And I challenge you, we're, se we're seven board members and there are several thousands of teachers. So seven to 7,000. It's not, it, we all have to work on this as a collective. We can send that in because we're the governing head, and I don't have a problem with that. But we need teachers. It was that grass movement that you all did that made a difference. So we have to be a grass movement again to work this. So tonight, get all your teachers together and start writing those letters because I'm going to draft a letter myself personally tonight because you're absolutely correct. If you don't want your um, electoral position stripped, how dare you have the audacity to think it's fair to strip someone else of theirs and it take it away from you, the public. Thank you. And I want to reiterate why that certainly is a I know a key point that the school boards, there's lots of other components that need to be addressed in this bill. That is just one. Um, when we, I know we heard from our public speakers that there's multiple portions of the bill that would directly affect local school districts, not just that one item. So if y'all can just come up with the draft um, and uh, let's start taking some steps to, to make something happen. Can and Mr. Bannock, just want to reiterate, yes. our people in the Midlands, our, our elected officials, our um, Richland County legislative delegation is hugely supportive of Richland 2 and Correct. Richland 1. They are um, constantly in our ear, constantly acting this, and they're there. Um, they have to vote on pe things like uh, you know medical issues, economic things, education. They're not experts in all those areas. And that's why we have to make sure that we are constantly in their air to make sure that they are adequately informed. But as far as our Richland County legislative delegation goes, they're very supportive of Richland 1 and Richland 2. Of education in general. Of education, absolutely. I'm sorry. Of education, absolutely. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. You're, yes, sir. Um, just thinking as a practical matter, Ms. Mecca, you can help me out because you're down there more often than we are. Um, since it's on the fast track, yes. conceivably, when would it come to a vote? And the reason I'm asking is because we don't come back for our vote on this particular, if we were going to take it to a vote, for two more weeks. So I want to make sure that we're not... No, we're this talking the, by their fast tracking it and reading it across the desk, it's going to go to subcommittee and it's going to be voted out. But I, I imagine very quickly, um, with regard to them having a special order, they'll have arguments on the floor on the Senate floor, like ASAP, but they'll also have subcommittee meetings. So we're talking days. We're talking days, well, weeks, weeks max. As far as far as finding out if this bill goes forward or not, as far as passing every component, yeah, there's, but we're talking days or weeks with regard to their progressing the bill. So if you, if you get it to me, I will, um, I'll do my best to get consent. I mean, I, I want to try to get consensus of the board. And I, I, unfortunately, the difficulty is I don't want to break any laws or, you know, not. Right. So and it, I think that as the chair, you're empowered to speak on behalf of the board. But of course, you want to get some input from board members without necessarily getting a formal. Well, I, one of my I generally try not to speak. Um, on behalf of the board without understanding where folks are so that I know whether exactly. I'm speaking with the board voice or not. Which is not necessarily a formal vote. Which is not a formal vote. Right. I, I will do my best to get to folks 
try to figure out the issues. I will do the best I can um, to make that happen in a way that I can make six other people happy. Um, wish me luck. <laughs> but I will do my best to fast track it. If you can get it to me quickly, I will do my best to follow all state laws and federal laws and also have our voices be heard. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Is that anything else? All right. Uh, next, we have uh, item 10, voting on our executive session items. If I can have a motion on item 10.1, student admission request into the district's adult education program. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Agostini. I move to approve students one, two, three, and four um, admission into adult education. Motion has Could been made right. by Ms. Agostini. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Holmes. Is there any discussion? Okay, with no discussion, we'll take the vote. What's that? Me? Oh, unanimous. Okay. It, uh, motion passes unanimously. Uh, next, we have student appeals. If I can please have a motion. Mr. Chair, to start, I'd like to pull students number two, three, and four. Okay. I'd like to make the motion for student number one to attend Blythewood Academy for the remainder of the year. Student number two, Blythewood Academy. Or excuse me, that's student number five, Blythewood Academy. Student number six, Blythewood Academy. Student number seven, deny the appeal. Student number eight, return to home school with services and on strict probation. Student number nine, refer back to administration. Student number 10, return to home school with services and on strict probation. And student number 11, uh, deny the appeal and send the student um, to Blythewood Academy. Okay, motion's been made by Ms. Agostini. Can I get a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Holmes. Um, we're having some technical issues, so I don't think we can see the motion on the screen. Uh, or can you behind us? Yeah, the one behind us. So, Ms. Agostini, if you'll just check the motion. Was that? Uh, I'm sorry, who seconded it again? Dr. Dr. Holmes, sorry. What's on mine? Yeah. Should we have the vote already popped up, Tamika? No. no, okay.
No services on number one. It's there to deny an appeal and uphold. Yeah, but then she has for seven to deny the appeal and go to, but 11 is to go to Park Hill County. Okay. It is upholding the district's, um, okay. yeah. So one two academy, five and six two academy. Deny the appeal. Seven eleven refer to That's that's four, correct. Okay. So the motion is correct. Seconded by Dr. Holmes. Is there any discussion? Ms. Chair. Yes, sir. Um, this is the second time around and I don't see it now, but we do understand that student number one will be Blackwood Academy with services for the remainder of the school year, right? Uh, is, oh, oh, sorry. No it should be rest of the school year, but no service, no specific service. I'm sorry, to Blackwood right. Academy for the remainder of the year. You're correct. That does year. need to be changed. It was in the first one, but not this one. Okay. So, yeah, Tamika, if we can update that. Thank you for catching that. Thank you, Dr. Elkins Johnson. Have we all cast our votes yet, or we're still in discussion? No, we're, okay. we're, we're waiting on discussion. So, okay, so the motion is now accurate. Is there any discussion? There is. There's, and I'm, I'm going to say this now so that no one can try to, you know, figure out the order in which we're speaking because some things are going to be pulled out. I just want to reiterate, this is a tough process. This is, it's tough to have to, you know, vote on um, a student's fate with regard to expulsion or Blythewood Academy or any, or any kind of disciplinary matters. Um, but just please, just, just wanted to reiterate, it's a tough decision to make these, but student safety teacher safety, our school safety is always paramount. Everything with regard to discipline, of course, is, you know, is, is looked at and scrutinized carefully. But I just want to reiterate that school teachers and student safety is just paramount. And I just wanted to put that out there to stress how uh, emphatically I feel about that. Thank you, Ms. Mackey. Is there any other discussion? If not, please take the vote at this time. Motion passes 7 0. Ms. Agostini? Mr. Chair, I'd like to make the motion to deny the appeal for student number two. Okay, motion's been made by Ms. Agostini. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Caution Parker. Is there any discussion? All right, whenever we are ready for the vote. And motion fails three yes, four no. Mm -hmm. um, if I can Mr. have Chair. another motion. Yes, ma'am. I would like to make a motion that we refer the student to Blythewood Academy for the remainder of the school year. Second. Motion has been made by Dr. Elkin Johnson, seconded by Dr. Holmes. Is there any, dis is there any discussion? And Dr. Elkins, you made the recommendation for the remainder of the school year, correct? Okay. Sorry, can, can you repeat, Dr. Elkins Johnson? I apologize. 
Dr. Alcantara, will you please repeat your motion? There's some confusion as to what your motion was. Mr. Chair, I'll make a, mo a motion that we change the vote, amend the motion to state Lifewood Academy. Well, I'm sorry, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, you're going to have to rescind your first motion okay. since it's already been seconded. Okay. I'll rescind my first motion and make a motion for Blythewood Academy I'll with second. strict probation. Student number two to Blythewood Academy on strict probation. Okay. Second Seconded by Mr. Shad. All right. Let's make sure it's correct on the screen. Do we need to, do we need to, I'm sorry, are we, are we in a period of discussion? We don't we, need to, we don't need to indicate strict probation if it's Blythewood Academy, do we? That's at the homeschool, typically. Well, so uh, wait, I have a motion and I already have a second on the table. So, would somebody like to make a... I am going to rescind and stop listening to my colleagues and make my own motion. See, I like to think for myself. I'm going to think for myself and make a motion. Right, so rescind the first, make a motion for Blythewood Academy. Second. <laughs> wow. Are y'all testing me? <laughs> Is this a test? All right. Dr. Elkins Johnson has now made a motion for the student to attend Blythewood Academy, and it has been seconded by Dr. Holmes. Is there any discussion? Tamika, you good? Okay. So with that, we will have the vote. And motion passes five yes, two no. Ms. Agostini. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to deny the appeal for student number three. Motion has been made by Ms. Agostini. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Dr. Caution Parker. Is there any discussion? With no discussion, we'll have the vote. And motion fails three yes, four no. If I can have an Mr. alternate Chair. motion. Mr. Chair. Yes, Ms. Mackey. I move that student number three, uh, that student number three be allowed, be referred to Blythewood Academy. All right. Motions were made by Ms. Mackey. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Holmes. Is there any discussion? With no discussion, we'll take the vote. Motion passes five yes, two no. Ms. Agostini. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to deny the appeal for student number four. I have a motion by Ms. Agostini. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Caution Parker. Is there any discussion? With no discussion, we'll have the vote. Motion passes four yes, three no. Ms. Agostini? I believe we're finished. Okay, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Sorry, we did have the LSU Clemson game last night, right? <laughs> All right, next on our agenda, we have um, the, sorry, we have um, Item 11.1, approval of the special, ob special obligation bond resolution, Dr. Davis. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, members of the board, the administration is bringing before you a resolution or a recommendation for a motion for approval to make a motion for the board to approve the resolution for the special source obligation bond for the energy performance projects. All right, board members, if I can have a motion, please. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Move to approve the special obligation bond resolution. Motion made by Ms. Motion made by Ms. Mackey. Do I have a second? Seconded by Mr. Shad. Um, is there any discussion? Mr. Chair, I have a couple of questions. Ms. Agostini. Thank you. On section um, five, who is the registrar registrar paying agent? Members of the board, Franny Heiser, our bond counsel for this bond, is here to answer any questions, so perhaps she can answer that question. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, um, members of the board. It's great to be with y'all. Good evening. Um, the, the registrar paying agent role in a bond transaction is usually filled by a, a an institutional trustee, a bank, Regions Bank, for example, uh, U.S. Bank, Wells Fargo Bank, and specifically the registrar is the official entity that keeps the list of folks that own the bonds. And back in the day, it used to be like literally a list. It would be handwritten or typed. Uh, now, of course, it's all digital, but that's the, um, that's the uh, purpose of the registrar. In the paying agent capacity, the funds flow to the paying agent the day of or the day before the payments are made, and they're responsible for making sure that the payments land where they're supposed to on the given payment dates. All right. Thank you. On section eight, um, top of page four. On the first, at the first paragraph at the end where it says they're on, is there supposed to be a period or is there more information that is supposed to be included with that? Uh, there's supposed to be a period. That is the end of the sentence. Mr. Chair, I'd like to amend this to add a period. I'm sorry, I apologize. Ms. Mackey, I mean, Ms. Sagstini, you want to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion um, to amend section eight, top page of, uh, top of the page four, after mm -hmm. the word there on, to include a period. Okay, motion to move by, by Ms. Agostini to add a period. Do I have a second? Seconded by, was that Mr. Shad? Okay. Is there any discussion? With no discussion, we'll have the vote. And that's actually an amended motion to the first motion, so. Correct. Yes, okay. Mr. Chair, do we want to include the word there on, or is this good as is? Well, I mean, you've already made a motion. We're voting on it. So. I think I said the word there on. I think it's not included. Oh, did you say there on and the period? I just understood the period. Um, I thought I said there on. I don't recall now. I think I just heard period. Board members, did y'all? I mean, the motion is for a period. We've already voted, so we can, we'll have to come back to that one. I apologize. Yeah. If this covers it, I, I'm good. It's, okay, thank you. All right, my next question is on... Um, well, I, I haven't gotten oh, the return sorry. yet on that motion. Thank you. Motion passes 7-0. Okay, yeah. Sorry, Mr. Chair, thank That's you. That's right, Ms. Um, section 15 on page 6. If you could just give me an example where it talks about relevant information of an event which all which adversely affects more than five percent of the revenues of the school district or the school district tax tax base. Yes, sir. that would um, that would be as if a um, 
a major uh, taxpayer went out of business, if there was a uh, you know, a catastrophic natural disaster that would prevent the school district from uh, uh, receiving up 5% of its revenues. With a school district this large and um, as large as y'all's budget, it's probably unlikely that one event would ever impact 5% of your revenue, but this is a fairly um, old requirement of state law, so we, we're required to, to put it um, in every resolution. Okay. Thank you. And then finally, will we be using co-counsel on this special obligation bond? It's my understanding that you will not. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Agostini. I'd like to amend Section 22 and ask to strike Burr Foreman McNair is authorized to associate co-counsel at the direction of the superintendent. Okay, Ms. Agostini has made a motion. Can Do you, I have a second? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that, Mrs. Agostini? I'd like to request Burr Foreman McNair is authorized to associate co-counsel at the direction of the superintendent. So we're striking that sentence from the resolution. Please. This is what your motion is. So do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Elkins Johnson. Is there any discussion? Everybody clear on the motion? I'm allowing the yeah. I'm fine with the amendments. I was, a, I was okay. the original maker of the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I was, yeah. Okay, so I'm fine with the amendments. I was the original maker of the motion, though. Oh, so. yeah. Well, we're, this is a secondary motion to the original motion, so we're voting on Miss Agostini's secondary motion. If this passes, we'll have two secondary motions that apply to the primary motion. So we are now, just to be clear, voting on the secondary motion to strike that sentence which has been motion made by Ms. Agostini, seconded by um, Dr. Elkins Johnson, and we will now take the vote. Motion passes 7-0. All right, is there any further discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir, Mr. Shad. Um, I make a motion that at the end of this resolution that we change 2019 to 2020. Okay. So, Go to the very end, and you're corrected where it's we're correct where it says adopted this. All right, so we have a motion on the table to change 2019 to 2020. Um, at the end of the parent sentence, the reads adopted this blank day of blank. Um, do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Elkins Johnson. Is there any discussion? With no discussion, we'll have the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Any further discussion? Okay, so just for, so board members are clear, um, we now have Ms. Mackey's uh, original motion, which has the three amendments associated. So the period, the striking of um, the sentence, and the 2020 change at the end. So that is what we are voting on. It, with no further discussion, we will now take the vote on that motion. And I don't know, I guess, Tamika, as far as referencing the other motions, the other past motions, we may want to say with other motions as approved or as amended, just so we make reference to that in the actual motion. Okay, take your vote. Motion passes 
Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. It's always good to be with y'all. I've got to say, I do lots of school districts, and every time I've been one of your meetings, I leave feeling much more optimistic about education. And then, I, unfortunately, in some other school districts, not so much. But I really do, <laughs> I really do enjoy coming to y'all's meetings. It makes it, me feel It's good. okay to say we're your favorite. It's yeah. okay to say that. <laughs> you certainly are tonight. Yeah. Really <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Mr. Um, Chair. Yes, sir. If I could just have a, a moment of personal privilege, I just wanted to state that I appreciate the board's effort in making sure that we get this bond resolution um, for this performance, uh, for this contract completed and done tonight um, so that we can move forward with the business of the board, uh, the business of the school district. But I'd also like to state that uh, it was our intention to not include the coal um Council information into this uh, resolution at this time, but I do hope that in in future resolutions that we bring forward to you that that language will be um, inserted back into um, into the resolution so that we can continue the work of the district in ensuring that um, members of our community and and we're in continuing the work of being inclusive and diverse in our practices and making sure that everyone has an opportunity to participate. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Next on our agenda, we have, um, again, under old business action requested. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Davis. I'm not going to read them. I'll let him read them. All the policies um, that we are are up for approval tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, members of the board, as you remember, at our special call board meeting where we um, introduced um, the policies for tonight's approval, um, we brought before you at last board meeting uh, at our last board meeting uh, on January the seventh, and asked for first reading. And now we're asking for the approval of the following policies: um, Policy JFAA, admissions of resident students; Policy JFABC, transfer students; Policy JFB school choice, uh, policy JH, student absences and excuses, policies JIAAA, educational opportunities for military students, policy revisions JICJ, possession and use of electronic, de electronic devices in schools, communication devices in schools, um, policy JICJA, social media and electronic communication, JIH, student interrogation, searches and arrests. JIHC use of mint, uh, metal detectors, JII student concerns and complaints and grievances, JJ student activities, JJA student organizations, JJAB limited open closed forms, JJE student fund, uh, uh, right, raising activities, mm -hmm. fundraising activities, it's, it's split up, I didn't see that. JJG, um, contest for students, JJI, interscholastic athletics, JK, student discipline, JKA, corporal punishment, physical force, JKD, suspension of students, JKE, expulsion of students, JKEE, are you like, your Alice is, um, your analysis, drug and alcohol testing for certain expelled students. Uh, JL, student welfare safety. JLCA, physical examinations of students, which was rescinded. Uh, JLCDC, food allergies and special dietary needs. JLCE, first aid and emergency care. JLCEF, uh, concussions and student athletes. JLD school counseling, JLDBB youth suicide prevention, JLF student wef welfare, JLIB student dismissal precautions, and JQ student fees, fines, and charges. And so we've discussed these policies at our last board meeting at length, and we're asking for uh, the board to make a, a recommendation to approve uh, policies. Um, as listed as 11.2 through 11.32. Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, Dr. Davis, I wasn't paying attention. Can you repeat that? <laughs> Just kidding. If I can have a motion, please. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Mackey. I move that we approve the policies as indicated in 11.2 through 11.32 with the exception of JLCA, which has been rescinded. Okay. Um, so the motion has been made by Ms. Mackey. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Holmes. Is there any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Agostini. I would like to request to amend um, the motion and postpone 
the vote on 11.12 policy JJ until our next meeting at the end of January. Ms. Uh, Agostini, if you would like to make an alternate motion, please make the motion to um, pull that out for separate consideration. And then we can, oh, so okay. if you pull I, it out, then we'll come you. back to thank that you. one specifically. I'd like to make a motion to pull it out. Okay, so which po one are you policy pulling out again? JJ. Which number is it? It's 11.12. Okay, so your, your amended motion is to pull out 11.2 um, policy 11.12 policy 11.12, sorry, 11.12. Okay, so motions were made by Ms. Agostini, alternate motion to the original motion to pull policy revision JJ student activities for separate consideration. Why? We did, but she's making a alternate motion, which is germane to the first motion to ask us to please pull that one for separate consideration. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Actually, it's for Ms. Mrs. Agostini. What is your reasoning? Got to have a second before you can have the dis discussion. Yeah, I need a second. Okay, I'll, I'll second. Seconded by Dr. Elkins Johnson. Is there any discussion? Yes. If she can just explain her reasoning behind this. The reason why I want it, it I, I'm still struggling to understand this policy and the eligibility for freshmen. To me, when I'm reading this policy to participate in interscholastic activities, when it relates to freshmen, um, it states in the policy that the freshmen have to have a one point, is it a 1.75 or a 1.5 grade point average, but then it goes on to talk about Carnegie, Carnegie units and that they have to acquire, I believe it's four prior to their participation if it's first semester. Well, an, a ninth grader may have not in the eighth grade taken the Carnegie units. And I realize that later on in the policy, it talks about seventh and eighth graders participating in interscholastic sports and also ninth graders in the first semester. But I would ask that the board delay the vote on this so it gives me more time to talk with Mr. Smith and to seek clarity so that when a parent reads this, it is clear at the first reading that I believe it doesn't pertain to a freshman for a student on page one. Let me let me ask a question, if I could, Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Mackey. So, are we postponing the vote until you under you are comfortable with it, or can Mr. Slip, Mr. Smith give us some? answers to the questions that you have tonight. Well, we've talked yeah. and he sent me the policy, but from what the policy that he sent, I believe it was from the South Carolina High School League, and I'm not looking at the policy, um, let me pull it up, but um, the South Carolina High School League, but I thought this policy was pertaining to not necessarily athletics, but activities, which are two different things. Well, and, and I want to be clear, I think the motion that Ms. Agostini has made is to pull it for separate consideration. So we'll, we'll come back to that one tonight if this passes on what to do with that one in particular. We're asking, she's asking to have it pulled from the block vote of the other policies. Okay, that's that's not correct. Okay. That's what that's what the, this amended motion is for that. Thank you for clarifying. Okay, yes. Thank you. Uh, just as a point of clarification, the section in which Ms. Agostini is questioning is under the interscholastic activities part of this policy. So that particular question is related to athletics. There is no GPA requirement for student activities or to participate in student government or in clubs and organizations. There's only a GPA requirement spot for student athletics and the student athletics portion of qualification for eighth graders is covered by the high school league which governs all high school league all, all members that are a part of the high school league and so those students are granted eligibility based on the completion or successful completion of eighth grade for the first semester of ninth grade which is explained in the high school league information that mr smith forwarded to the board Mr. Chair, thank can, you. Can, if we can, okay. I think if everybody's clear on the motion, I like, and I don't want to stymie conversation right now, but if everybody's clear on what the motion is, I'd like to go ahead and vote on this motion to have it pulled, and then we can come back to discuss it with the with the um, motion in a second. Mr. Chair, I'm not clear. Mrs. Agostini, are you saying that you are prepared to vote for it tonight, or are you saying that you want to have a discussion with Mr. Smith between meetings or some future meeting? But I, I think the motion that she's made right now is it's just to ask it. us to deal with this separately, separately from the block tonight. So we're, 
So the, the motion that she's made is simply to pull it from the block to vote on right now, and then there'll have to be another motion on that policy separate. It's just like our students when we pull them, and then the motion's made to deal with this separately. So, but right now the vote is just to pull it from the block for separate consideration. Does that, again, I don't want to stop conversation, but I just want to make sure we're clear on what the, this motion is. I'm very clear, I'm ready to vote. Okay, all right. So if we can vote on Ms. Agostini's uh, motion to pull it from this block. Motion fails, two yes, five no. Is there any other discussion or alternate motions um, before we vote on the block of policies as indicated by Ms. Mackey and seconded by Dr. Elkins Johnson? Or I mean, who made the second for that? Sorry, Dr. Holmes. Okay, well, no, yes ma'am. Oh, I, I thought you. Uh, I mean, if you, yes, do you have further discussion? Yes, yeah, so just further discussion on the policy, JJ, where um, Dr. Davis made reference to its interscholactic athletics. When I'm looking at the policy on page one, what I'm making reference to is under interscholastic activities, and it doesn't differentiate that this is for sports. To me, as I read it, and where my confusion is, first of all, is it's for activities. Uh, and to me, it's just... It's not either well written or it's easily misunderstood. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Um, Ms. Mackey, one thing that I'd like to point out to make sure we're clear, I think you had yes. um, asked to have the rescinded policy looked at separate. We still have to vote on that policy. It's oh. actually in the motion right now. Yeah, I guess I was trying to clarify that 11.24 policy JLCA has actually been rescinded, is, is, a, rescind, okay. is a rescission. So it's yes, in here still, accurately. We're proving that it has been rescinded. I was trying to acknowledge that that's actually okay. a rescension except in All right, perfect. Just wanted to make sure. Not so a problem. We're clear we're voting on all of those, including the rescinded policy. Right. Um, so at this time, we'll have the right. vote. Motion passes six one or six yes, one no. Um, so the motion carries. Next on our agenda, we have item 12.1, our draft agenda items for January the 28th, 2020. Dr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, members of the board, we have for the, as a draft for the January 28th, 2020 regular board meeting, um, call to order at 5.30. We'll go into executive session where we'll discuss student admission requests into adult ed and student appeals. We'll have our inspirational moment and the approval of the agenda. We'll also ask for the approval of the consent agenda, followed by public participation and the legislative update. We'll have items uh, voting from executive session, which will be the student appeals and a student admission request into the district adult ed and it as and any items as needed as discussed in executive session for old business or action requested we'll have a report from the school resource officers as well as a report on the budget timeline update from the charter school and an update on our capital improvement projects we'll review our draft agenda for february the 11th and ask for approval of that agenda. We'll have public participation number two, should it be needed. Um, board and superintendent comments, followed by executive session number two, should it be needed. And voting on executive session two items, should that be needed, and then adjournment. All right, board members, questions or comments? Dr. Alkins Johnson. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Just a um, question. Dr. Davis, I want to know if it's possible in the next board doc, if you can send us information on Halligan, Mahoney, and Williams when their contract is up. Um, I've been on the board a while, and I noticed that 
we have not actually voted on who we want as our council. So I'd like to see that in the information as to when their contract is up or if they have a contract so we can at least be able to consider other councils that may be out there who may want to be the lead um, council for Richland School District 2. So if you can just send me or send the board that con um, that information. Dr. Johnson, would you be amenable to um, having a list of all of our council um, that are available? And, and I think we did an RFP a while back that um, and, and there were responsive legal counsel, not just them, but for all legal counsel. Can we get a, a report and maybe executive session from mm -hmm. um, Dr. Miley on who all those folks are? And That would be great to have all of it, but I mainly, my focus is on Halligan, Mahoney, and Williams because since I've been on the board 2012, that has only been our general counsel, and we've never given the opportunity for others to be the lead counsel. But all would be great. Thank I think you. it would be a good refresh yeah. oh, to get absolutely. an update on all of our legal counsel um, because there is a comprehensive oh. list, not just them. Absolutely. If administration's okay, I don't know if we can get it by next meeting or the one after. Oh, but absolutely. I'll, and it's no rush. I mean, if we don't have the next meeting, at least one of those meetings. But I want to see if they're under contract with us or how do we do that. Did you have anything to add? Yes. Yeah. No, no okay. nothing. All right. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely get that added um, as a uh, as an update. It's been a while since we looked at it. I'm sorry. Point of clarification: you stated update and a report and, and something in executive session. Dr. Elkins Johnson asked for a board and board and a board brief. So I need clarification on what the expectation. I, is. I would like it presented in executive session. A comprehensive list of all of our um, is a contractual matter because we have a. We have a list of um, counsel that we've approved in the past via RFP, and I'd like to get that presented to us, the full list, and talk about when the RFP was done and, and kind of give some background on that. Absolutely. Not not as an item of pushback. I, I would want to just verify that we can have a discussion in executive, if we're okay. not discussing a legal matter, that was, that was if that's something question. that will pertain to executive session as opposed to providing an information in a board brief to the board of the uh, the firms that we have contracted with uh, and, the t and the expiration dates of those contracts or the time we started until now, okay. as opposed to discussion executive session because it's not dealing with the legal, we're not seeking legal counsel. That's yeah, I'll go back to what I said earlier. I don't want to break any state law. So uh, if we just need to get a report on it, but I would like it to be the comprehensive list. Um, and I think that also needs to have some background because I, if Dr. Miley, if I remember correctly, um, there was an RFP done for legal counsel. There's a There were numerous responsive firms and lots of areas, not just the one. So I think it's good to have that whole comprehensive component. And if it's time to do a RFP, maybe I don't know when we need to do that again. But thank you. Thank you, Dr. Davis, for yes, sir. keeping me out of trouble um, this time. All right. Um, any other comments? Ms. Mackey, did you have a comment? Oh, I don't. Okay. All right, with that, we will move on to item 13.1, approval of the draft agenda. If I can have a motion. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Mackey. I move to approve the draft agenda items for January 28th, 2020's school board meeting. Motions were made by Ms. Mackey. Do I have a second? Seconded by Mr. Shad. Is there any discussion? Take the vote at this time, please. Did everybody vote? Did it come up? 6-1. Motion passes 6-6 uh, six yes, 1 no. 
Um, next on our agenda is item 14.1, public participation two, which we have no one signed up to speak. And we will now move on to 15.1, board and superintendent comments. If I can start on my right with Ms. Agostini. Just want to say Happy New Year and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Mackey. Likewise, I think I've commented on everyone who presented tonight. Happy New Year to everyone who has to be here and those who choose to be here. Bless you. Thank you for your advocacy at whatever level that is. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Dr. Holmes. I'd like to say thank you to Dr. Davis and his staff for all the board appreciation that we received earlier this evening. We appreciate that. I know it takes a lot of work and, you know, sometimes we're a lot of work, but we appreciate that. Also, I'd like to thank you, uh, Ms. Dr. Halls, for bringing these lovely young ladies into the board meeting tonight. I love seeing girl power. I, I, I love it. And I appreciate you moving these girls in the right direction with that. Also, I'd like to say... Um, have a great new year and thank you. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, I'm sorry. I did have one more thing to say. I forgot. Oh, also on the, uh, make sure that you do what you said we were going to do earlier. Make your voice known to your legislators immediately about this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Caution Parker. Um, first, would like to say a thank you to, to the board, uh, not to the board, but to the <laughs> superintendent and his staff for such a wonderful dinner this evening and the recognition. Um, and I know I, I, I'm not going to speak on behalf of my fellow um, colleagues, but I can tell you I deeply appreciate it very much. It, it means a lot. I'd also like to say congratulations to all the award uh, recognition that, uh, that we had this evening. That was fantastic. And outside Outstanding CFI. I just can't say enough about those uh -huh. girls. It was just fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Alcus Johnson. Just like to say Happy New Year to everyone. I'm glad to see that you guys arrived back safely. Bright eyes and bushy tail. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shad. I just echo every sentiment of my colleagues, um, but I did want to say to each and every one of you that I appreciate you on this school board appreciation month. Thank you. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, members of the board. If you did not know, which I'm sure you did, that Thursday is the end of the first nine weeks of school. Yeah. I mean, first semester yeah. of school. So we will have completed 90 days of school already. Time is flying by. Oh, yeah. Um, so Thursday, before you know, we'll all be spending two days at uh, CLA uh, for graduations, uh, which we look forward to in, in 90 some odd days. Um, again, let me take an opportunity to um, say thank you to our school board members for the work that they do for our school district and public education. January is indeed designated as School Board Appreciation Month, and this year's theme is School Board Strong. So prior to tonight's meetings, uh, trustees attended an appreciation dinner held in their honor, and we just want to thank you for your contributions in shaping the vision, values, and priorities and beliefs of Richland School District 2, and for providing the necessary resource for us to achieve our goals. Uh, the roles and responsibilities of our school board extend far beyond the monthly meetings that are held in this room, and we sincerely thank you for your time that you dedicate to this school district. Next week, following the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend, Richland 2 will break ground on the, C on the Center for Knowledge North on Tuesday, January the 21st at 10.30 a.m. The community is invited to attend uh, this $9.8 million project is part of the 2018 bond um, referendum, and CFK North is located on the campus of Muller Road Middle School. Now it's the time to make school choice requests. Uh, choice applications are open through January the 31st, 2020. Families living in Richland 2 attendance zone have the opportunity to request entry uh, into magnet programs or schools other than your residential zoned school. Check the district's website for more information, for more details, including the school, uh, in school information night schedule. And once again, I, I wanted to take a few moments to ask for your help. 
help. Um, it is it is desperately needed to keep our school zones safe. Mm -hmm. Careless, distracted driving and speeding are becoming more and more prevalent, making our school zones increasingly dangerous. And we recently had another um, security officer hit by a car in um, in our drop off pickup lines um, as a result of distracting driving. So we really, really need your help in helping to reduce the risk of injury or worse to our employees who are simply trying to ensure that our students are getting in and out of their cars in a safe and secure manner. Um, we are asking all drivers to proceed with caution in these areas and when driving on school campuses. And I would like to take an opportunity to thank all of our community members who come to our school board meetings and present their information and concerns in such a constructive manner that gives us an opportunity to continually reflect on, our, on the best practices of our school district. Uh, and so again, thank you all for being here and thank you all for being a, a, a a, an asset uh, to our school district. We really appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to echo the sentiments. I appreciate all of my fellow board members. Um, it's uh, This is important work that we do, as we've seen from all of the young folks that come in front of us all year. Um, and I, I'm certainly aware in my household of the end of the um, period through exams and the stress that comes with that from the young lady in my house. Um, I'd also like to um, sort of respectfully make some comments about one of the public session, uh, the public comments tonight about um, the, the decision that we made on putting money back in classrooms and the bonuses that we gave to staff and our media centers and the money that we put into a um, into the community. Um, which actually saves us tax dollars through reduced stress on our 8% bond. Um, Richland School District 2 has been very conservative um, in the funds that we put into a reserve fund. Um, we have a policy that the board set, and we are um, within that policy, um, the money that we have set aside for a rainy day. And I was not on the board in the 2008 recession, but I am fully aware that um, those reserve funds were critical in operations of the district during the downturn in the economy at that time. Um, and so the, the board does not take lightly we do not want to over-reserve funds, but we also can under-reserve, and so we try to find that fine balance of um, of trying not to do either of those um, so that we don't put undue burden on our taxpayers through just having extra money sitting out there that's not necessary. We There was no additional cost to the taxpayer for the, the money that we used that was left over from the last fiscal year. We are still within our contingency requirements, um, which actually our contingency Contingency requirements help, help us save money. Some school districts have to borrow money for cash flow because the money does not come into us as we have needs to spend money for salaries and other things. And so we don't have to borrow those funds, which actually reduces um, the need for additional money in our general fund um, year over year. And uh, so I'm proud of the work that we have done as a board. We, can, we continuously look at those funds. Um, it's certainly challenging. Uh, we have a lot of challenges in front of us, um, but I feel that the board did um, ha has done its due diligence. Staff took a long time to really look at the needs in the district and ensure that those dollars were being spent wisely. I think our board did a great job um, in reading through the material, understanding the impact and the decision that was made. Um, with that, I will have a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn tonight's meeting. Motion has been made by Ms. Mackey. Do I get a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Shad. Um, if I can have everyone raise your right hand high, uh, who's in favor, the motion passes unanimous. Thank you very much. We're adjourned.